processing any variable. Um, can be due to outlying observations in the baseline. So if you have one client who has an outlying observation, it's going to look like it's not effective. If another client doesn't have that kind of outlier, it's going to look much more effective. So it's not necessarily that the intervention is effective, it's that the baseline by which you measure it is variable. Right? That's, that's why we've got this point about uh, variability. Um, and again, Due to these problems, it's difficult to distinguish between published studies. So um, this impedes scientific progress because, again, we can't communicate measure, right? So one thing that was done to, uh, to alleviate this was to no longer use that maximum point, but to use the median. Um, and in turn, difficult to um, interpret whether... or not the intervention is effective or not. Okay, uh, the advantage of it is, of course, is that it's resistant to um, that outlying value that, that was used in that previous uh, previous type of intervention. So, you know, these are two examples of these kinds of um, uh, quantifications, and there are a, a, a ton more, but they all have these kinds of, like, nuances of, okay, let's use the mean, let's use the median, let's do this, let's do that. Um, they all have similar kinds of shortcomings. So uh, the, the one that I want to, I want to skip all the rest, I want to focus it on one that is a kind of uh, 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 a total shift away from this kind of analysis, and it's called non-overlap of all pairs. Now at first blush, it's like, whoa, what is going on here, right? Look at all these errors, look at all this stuff. Basically, what we're looking at here to kind of just break it down is uh, what, what this, um, illustration does is it shows one data point. And again, look, we're looking at this maximum outlying data point here, right? All the arrows originate here. What this technique does is for each baseline data point, it compares it to all of the intervention data points. So you would do the same thing for data point one, data point two, three, four, all of them, and compare each of them to each of the uh, intervention data points. So what you're looking for, and, and so this is just one point, right? So you're basically doing this 10 times. And that's what that out, uh, that's what the handout is all about. So um, if you look at, well, we'll look at it later, but basically you can start paying it, put that in the back of your mind where um, we're gonna be sort of counting the number of overlaps for each baseline data point compared to each uh, uh, intervention data point going across. So here, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, so for every data point in the intervention phase that exceeds this line, we call that the non-overlap, right? So you see that all the arrows going up 
are labeled N, right, because they're not overlapping. And keep in mind, in this example, we're looking for non-overlap in the sense that we're looking for increases in a behavior. A lot of the time what you're looking for is decreases in behavior, in which case, you know, non-overlap would be ones that are lower. Does that make sense? Okay. So here, um, you know, anything that's above this value of seven is a non-overlap. And for each non-overlap, you add one. So uh, essentially, what we have is um, we have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven non-overlaps. We have two ties, right? Because this, this data point and this data point are, are seven, which is where you would count 0.5. And then here are two that are lower, so these are overlaps, all right? And what you do is um, you basically count them up, right? You see that it's one plus 0.5 plus 0.5 plus one. And that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is count one for each non-overlap. It really doesn't matter which way you do it because it's all just a zero-sum game. Um, but in this example, you can see that it's adding one for each overlap and 0.5 for each tie and zero for all non-overlap. So, you know, you could have seven zeros added here, but it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't add anything, so it's not counting. Meanwhile, can these data points, it's the same thing. Yes? Can you repeat that? Um, you don't add anything for the non-overlaps. So you could add seven zeros right here, but you'd just be adding zero. So there's no there's no point in writing it out essentially. Is that what you're asking? Can you repeat the entire counting again? Sure, sure yeah, of course. Um, so basically this data point is a seven, right? Um, and so what you do is, for data points in this example that are lower, you count them as overlaps. So here you have two overlapping data points, right? Because they're lower than that data point. These two data points here, here, let me let me actually circle them. That, that'll be a little bit easier because this will allow us to refer to the same thing. Okay, so these two data points, right? For for this data point, they're overlapping, right? Because they're below it. But for this data point, they're not. You see that, right? Because they're above it. Make sense so far? Okay, so what we're doing though is we're only looking at this data point here for now. We do them one at a time essentially. And so these two overlaps, each of them gets a one. That's what, that's what this represents and that's what this represents, okay? And then these two here, this T and this T, these are tied because they're both the same value as this one. So they're counted as 0.5 because they're neither overlapping or not overlapping, they're the same. So that's why, that's why, they're, uh, that's why they're 0.5. So far so good? And then I'm gonna assume that's a yes. If not, just you know, speak up. Um, and then the rest of these guys here, these are all non-overlapping because they're above that value of seven. So they would be counted as zero. So you could certainly say, okay, zero plus zero, you know, dot, 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 there's seven, I don't know, right? But, you know, zero plus, this is a little bit,
counterintuitive because, again, it depends on, in fact, it indicates, you know, 50-50, right? Literally, it's 50%. Calculating NAP, this is where... that sheet that you got comes into play um, right you all should have this in front of you so what we have is uh, the, the values that are going down here are the baseline data points. 